So you're navigating, you're a navigator, you're a sailor on an ocean, man, that's what, that's what you are. You're a mobile creature, you're going from point A to point B all the time. You're not sitting there glued to a rock like some brainless, you know, sea creature. There's a funny little creature called a hydra, very simple little creature. In its juvenile stage, it has a brain because it swims around, but then when it turns into an adult, it latches itself to a rock and promptly digests its brain. Because if you're just sitting on a rock and you're not moving, you don't need a brain. So, but that's not our issue, right? We're, we're zipping around in the world, and so we're navigating agents. And so to navigate, you, there's two things you need to know. And the first is, where the hell are you? Exactly, precisely, right? Razor sharp. What's good about you and what's bad about you? By your own, by your own reckoning. You don't have to... You can ask other people, but this is a game you play yourself. It's like, as far as I'm concerned, I'm taking stock. What is it that's okay about me and what needs some work? And you gotta watch to not be too self-critical when you're doing that too, because that can just be another kind of flaw. And then the next is, okay, well, where are you going? What's your destination? Well, and that's what the frame is. Now, you know, you, you could do that in a very sophisticated way. And you do that by thinking consciously about who it is that you are in an articulated manner and where you want to go and why and how you're going to get there. And people hardly ever do that. that is, that's come as such an absolute shock to me as an educator. I, I just, because one of the other programs, I, I use this in my classes, one of the other programs in this suite of programs is called the Future Authoring Program. And I started developing it in my Maps of Meaning class, which is where some of this material is from. And I got students to write about their past. It's like, okay, we're, we're talking about stories, so let's tell your story. Who are you? How'd you get here? What are you now? That usually helps people put things to rest, although it's quite stressful while you're doing it. Stress goes up when you're doing it, and maybe you feel miserable for a couple of weeks, and then stress goes down and it stays down. So that's, and that's also why people don't do it, because who the hell wants to have their stress go up? But if it's temporary, it's a sacrifice. So then the next issue is, well, where are you going? And one of the things that, and this I just still, I cannot understand. These students that had been in education system for 15 years, 14 years, high-end students, most of them, not once in their whole bloody life did anyone ever get them to sit down for like a day and say, all right, justify your existence. <laughs> like, well, seriously, it's like here you are in university, you're taking a bunch of courses, you've got some sort of vague career plan. It's like, defend the damn thing a bit, since you're going to go live it and everything, you're staking everything on it. It's like, what's your damn plan? And why are you so convinced that it's not the plan of a babbling fool? Because if you haven't thought about it, then it is. And if you really want to go out there and live that out, you know, one of the things Carl Jung said was that you, you're in a story, whether you know it or not. And, and then he made two nice comments about that. If it's someone else's story, you're probably going to get a bit part. And it might not be the one you want. And if it's a story that you don't know, it might be one with a really bad ending. Or maybe it's just bad period with a worse ending. And if you don't know what the story that you're living out is, maybe that's the one. You know, maybe you got that from your mother, you got it from your grandmother, you got it from your aunt, or God only knows where you picked it up because you pick up things like mad because that's what human beings are like. So maybe you're living a malevolent tragedy unconsciously. And then one thing you might ask yourself is, well, how wretched and miserable is your life? Let's add futile to that. How wretched, miserable, and futile is your life? And you might say, well, yeah, 70% on each count. It's like, then you're probably unconsciously living out a malevolent tragedy. And maybe that's not for the best. Well, it's either that or the whole universe hates you, right? Or 70% hates you, you know? So, so anyways, you know, we got students to start writing in detail about not what they wanted. It's not a career thing. Because that's the closest people usually get is they have a career plan. It's like, no, no, it's not a career plan. That's, that's peripheral, important, but peripheral. It's like, all right, you got three years, man. You're going to live them anyways. Devote those three years to setting the world up around you so that it's the best it could possibly be for you, as if you were taking care of yourself, as if you cared for yourself. Well, what would that look like? You know, let's say, just for the sake of argument, if you figured out where you were, that you could have what would be best for you. Well, what is that? I bet you, d you never asked. 
People don't ask. And so life comes at them like random snakes and they sort of fend them off. And life goes by and things don't work out the way people expected them to. But a huge part of that is they didn't know where they were because they wouldn't look or didn't know that they should look. Ignorance and willful blindness, right? Two great catastrophes. And they never figured out where they wanted to go or why. Now, there's a problem with figuring out where you want to go. And the problem is, is that you make your conditions for failure clear to yourself. And people don't like that. So if you keep yourself in the fog, then you can't tell when you screwed up. Now, that isn't so good because you're still screwing up. You're just too blind, self-blind to notice. Although, in, in, in the short term, that's less painful. If you make your criteria for success razor sharp, then you know every time you screw up. But that's great because then you could fix it. You could either repair the, the, the behavioral inadequacy or the conceptual inadequacy that you're using as a tool in that situation, or maybe you could adjust your damn plan. Either way, you can fix it. And so, okay, so you're living in one of these bloody things and you might as well, it seems to me, you might as well make it the best one you could live in because you don't have anything better to do. Now, if you don't do that, if you don't do it consciously, and, and this is what the psychoanalyst pointed out, is that you have innumerable quasi-autonomous subsystems that make you up that will generate stories impulsively and you'll just act them out. And you know that because you watch yourself over two weeks and you think, Jesus, I did a lot of stupid things in the last two weeks. And you think, why? And it's because you're a random, you're a collection of somewhat random quasi autonomous personality units and lacking a leader, they're just going to fire off whenever they want. You know, first you're hungry, then you're thirsty, then you want to go to bed with your wife, you know, then you want to sleep in, then you want to tell your boss off, then you want to curse at the guy that cuts you off in traffic. It's like, you're kind of like a two-year-old, you know, just it's one emotional frame after another vying for dominance. There's no overarching hierarchy and there's no king at the top. And so, you know, we already talked about pyramids of competence and what's supposed to be at the top is you want to bring all those things together. We understand this neurologically. I'll show you some of that in a little bit. We understand this neurologically, how, 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 how this maps in some sense right onto the neural structure of your being. You want to put something in control. And the thing that you should put in control is the bloody thing that pays attention and learns, right? Everything else in the hierarchy should be subordinate to the thing that pays attention and learns.